Okay, so we'll get started now. Um, so hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you're all doing well um, and welcome to our No Spring No Problem panel. Um, if I could quickly just remind everyone who's not on the panel to turn off their cameras um, and turn off their mics as well until like the second half of the, of the event, that would be great. Um, so we all know firsthand how like stressful and frustrating spring applications can be. Um, and unfortunately, it, unfortunately, it's just the case that the majority of people aren't successful with their applications. Um, I'm sure like the majority of the panel will agree that it's all, I mean, a lot of it is down to luck um, amongst other things. And by no means, it's by no means the be all and end all of your financial career. So today we have uh, six amazing panelists who didn't do spring weeks, but went on to secure summer and full-time offers from a range of prestigious firms. Um, we're also joined by Rohina Begum from SEO London, who's going to provide some more insight into what you can be doing over the next couple of months to really maximise your chances of securing that summer internship. So I'll let the panel introduce themselves, um, maybe starting with Yash. Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, I'm Yash. I'm a second year economic student at UCL and this summer I'll be interning at RBC um, within the investment banking division. We haven't yet picked our teams. I think that's something which we'll be doing over the course of the next few weeks or get a form to fill in. Um, and I guess a fun fact, if we're doing fun facts, um, is that uh, I was actually stung by a jellyfish in Australia a couple of years ago. Nice one. Okay, uh, Amar? Hey everyone, uh, my name's Amar. I'm doing philosophy and economics at UCL. I'm also a second year student. And um, I'm going to be interning in the equity derivatives trading team at Societe Generale. Um, it's a French investment bank. And fun fact, I'm a qualified lifeguard. Great. Uh, Milan? Hi, everyone. So I'm Milan. I'm a second year economics student and um, I'll be interning at Evercore this summer. Um, a fun fact about me is that I really enjoy um, sports like paragliding and um, white water rafting so yeah adventure sports great uh alex hey guys my name is alex i'm a third year economic student at ucl and i i did my summer at perella weinberg last year and i'll be joining them as an analyst this year and a fun fact about me is i've been in a magnitude seven earthquake in greece Okay, very cool. Uh, Pristy? Hi everyone, my name's Pristy. I'm also a second year doing economics and this summer I'll be interning in the investment banking division at Bank of America. Um, a fun fact about me is that um, when I was really young, the first time my grandparents' dog met me, it bit me. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, Emma? Uh, not Emma, sorry, Emma. <laughs> Hi guys, um, I'm Emma. Uh, like a lot, a lot of the other people on the panel, um, I'm second year UCL econ. Um, I'll be interning with Credit Suisse in the investment banking division this summer. Um, I don't know about team preferences yet, so I can't tell you on that. Um, as a little fun fact about myself, um, I'm, an, I'm an extra in an upcoming Bollywood movie. Okay, cool. And uh, finally, Rahina. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see so many of you have joined. Uh, my name is Rahina Begum and I work at SEO London, um, which is a charity that supports BAME and low socioeconomic students gain entry to various different opportunities. Um, so I work within the investment banking and asset management team at SEO, which I've been doing for the last three years or so. I studied history at Queen Mary and after graduating, I did a little bit of teaching as well as I went into the CSR space. So the corporate social responsibility space within two different firms before joining SEO London. And a fun fact, um, not very fun, but I didn't know how to cycle as a child. So I recently been taking that up and very wobbly. <laughs> Yeah, very nice funny. okay so um in terms of the structure of the panel the panel itself will last around 45 minutes um and then we'll go into two rounds of breakout rooms where you can ask some of the panelists any questions you have directly um so we'll get started we'll go through this kind of chronologically so let's start by like throwing it back to the end of first year um you're really interested in finance you want to apply for a summer internship but maybe you didn't apply for spring weeks or um, the spring process didn't go too well for you. And maybe you're a bit disappointed about that. Um, so how did you guys deal with the rejections, be that from springs or summers? And how did you remain motivated? Um, 
So, Christy, do you want to start us off? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, I think dealing with rejections for me, it was just I accepted the fact that I will get rejected. So, literally, everyone gets rejected, and you apply for so many. So, you're inevitably going to get rejected from a few. So, yeah, first of all, I kind of just accepted it. And um, with remaining motivated, I sort of struggled with that with summers, but then. Um, I sort of had a plan B if things went wrong. So when I started feeling demotivated, I started thinking about what other ways I could get to where I wanted to get. So I started researching into off-cycle internships in case I don't get a summer internship, or I realized that I could apply for a master's and then apply for internships again next year. So just sort of figuring out other ways that I could get to the final place was what kept me motivated, I think. I also didn't just apply for investment banking. Um, I applied for finance and things like that as well. And whilst they are hard to get into, they're not as competitive as investment banking. So sort of having that to lean back on also sort of kept me going. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's some great advice. Um, what about you, Alex? Um, so I think the first thing I started to do after first year was try and figure out why I was getting rejected. Um, and I think for a lot of people going into their first year, they don't really understand what investment banking is and they don't really understand what sort of career path they want to go down. So I think the first thing you want to do is figure that out because all the roles in finance are quite different and it's really important to understand why you want to go into something if you're going to convince someone else that you should work in the field. And then to, to stay motivated in second year, uh, as Pristy said, rejections are just part of the process and you have to have a thick skin. And um, yeah, it, yeah, it's part of the process. Just keep on going. And uh, also, like Pristy said, there's so many different ways into investment banking. Even after you graduate, you could go into tax and then go into banking. So even if you don't get a summer, again, it's not the be all end all. Stay motivated and yeah, just, just try your best. Mm -hmm. Um, and Amar, same question to you. How did you deal with rejections? Yeah, so I think the most important thing is to not feel as if you're doing it alone. You want to do it with your friends. Um, I personally had my sources of motivation from my friends who were all applying together. Um, the spring weeks which I applied to, which were very few, I didn't do that many, um, they happened because of my friends. So it's important that you'll kind of, if you all apply together, you'll all be like sort of bouncing off each other, motivating each other. And then come second year, um, you know, you're reapplying again because you didn't get anything. I think it's really important to speak to people who've been in the process. So, you know, make friends with the year above, make friends with people who, you know, might also have been in the same situation. So I got a lot of the advice from year above um, who sort of helped me guide, uh, who guided me on what I should do and how I ended up getting one in the end. But yeah. Yeah, that's some great advice. Um, and Rohina, like, how would you recommend that students deal with rejections from spring weeks or summers or whatever it is? Yeah, I mean, everyone else has kind of made some really good suggestions. I think one thing that I would definitely say, don't take it personally. Um, just because you have been rejected does not mean that you are a bad candidate. I think having worked at SEO London, like we tend to notice that you just don't know. It might be a case that you applied a little bit too late and the spaces were already gone, which means you actually your application wasn't even reviewed and you've just been rejected. So don't take it personally. And the other thing that I would say is just change your mindset um, in that don't see it as a, as a rejection, if anything, if you've applied to um, spring weeks and you've been unsuccessful, you're so much more stronger at the end of the cycle than when you would have began the cycle, just because you now actually understand how it works, you understand the different processes and you would have hopefully learned something off the back of being unsuccessful. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Yash, are there any like key takeaways you learned from the spring week application process that kind of helped you out through the summer process? Yeah, uh, I think that I learned quite a lot of things from the spring process. I think some of the mistakes which I made in the spring process were firstly applying too late. I didn't quite uh, apply as early as many other students would have. Uh, so that obviously, like Rahina said as well, uh, could mean that I've been rejected straight away without my application being reviewed. Um, also, I learned from the spring weeks where my weakness was, and that was I was being rejected at the initial stages before, like during the tests. And so what I did for the summers, uh, I got a job test prep subscription, and I worked on that aspect of it, as well as refining my reason as to why I actually want to do investment banking. So those are the two key takeaways um, 
identifying where I went wrong the first time and also having a clear kind of idea as to why I wanted to do investment banking. Mm -hmm. Melon, what about you? Anything you learned from the process? Um, I pretty much echo what Yash said, really. Um, kind of apply early because when I was in the spring week process, I applied kind of near the deadlines, which definitely didn't help my chances of getting it. And then also complete practice tests. So I also use job test prep and I found that really useful. So um, just doing that and kind of identifying what the job, um, what the test providers are for each firm. So then you can do the tests according. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah, definitely. That's some great advice. Um, and Emir, finally, same question to you. Yeah, what I would say kind of ties into the first question as well. Um, you're going to get rejected. And this is a piece of advice someone told me as well. If you can't deal with rejection, at the end of the day, the industry is very brutal. You're going to be working long hours and the work is at times quite bland. So if you can't deal with rejection, it's going to be very difficult for you. So that's something which you definitely need to learn. You're going to be rejected. You have to deal with it. And you just have to keep going and keep moving, moving through the process. The other thing is, as um, other people on the panel have said, apply early. And also, I think it was, as Alex was saying, identify which stage of the process you're getting rejected at. So is it the CV screening? Is it the online tests? Is it the cover letter? Is it the first round interview? Identify where you're getting rejected at and then focus on improving that. And the final thing I'll say is um, networking. Don't underestimate networking. It's use LinkedIn because it's such a good tool. Message as many people as possible and um, it'll help you a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all some great advice there. Um, so thinking about the summer application process now, one of the main benefits, I guess, of Springs, other than the whole conversion, is that it gives you something to put on your CV. Um, and without spring weeks on your CV, how did you guys um, improve your CV prior to summer applications? So Alex, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. So I think one of the best ways to improve your CV is by being part of society and being part of more than one. And when I say be part, not just as a member, as, as part of the committee, and then really choosing societies you're actually interested in. So as part of the Economist Society, which I love and I think is an amazing society. And um, and then sort of you can talk about your motivations and your interests in that interview stage. Um, also, there's there's opportunities outside of university. For example, you could volunteer at a charity. Um, obviously, the, the main reason you want to volunteer shouldn't be because you want to get an investment banking internship, but is a, there is a positive so externality from being there and talking about transferable skills and experiences. And there's so many sort of problems and social issues at university and, you know, in our local community. So there's plenty of places to volunteer. And then finally, just reach out to anyone you know, anyone and everyone. It doesn't have to be banking, it could be law, tax, accounting, and try and get something over summer. I did a, um, a like, working with children in a summer camp and that was, it was a it was super fun and also you could talk about the sort of difficulties and how you could tr transfer that to stressful situations working in a bank so yeah i think those are the main three things yeah definitely um and i think part-time jobs are also like a great idea um so what about you yash i know you obviously co-founded the m a group um what else did you do to really improve your cv yeah, so uh, exactly like uh, Alex said, societies for me were the main way to strengthen my CV. So along with co-founding the M&A group, I did other roles in different finance societies. So the benefits of doing that is there's two benefits. Firstly, it's it allows you to demonstrate different skills, leadership, communication, those, those sort of skills to the banks and also allows you to demonstrate interest in the role you're applying for so having actually founded an M&A group and then you're applying for uh, investment banking you have a clear reason which you can explain to them um, as to why you're applying so that's the main kind of thing which I did uh, to strengthen my CV and also I tried to like Alex said as well uh, try and find some experience over summer so I one of my mom's uh, friends she worked at Marsh and McKenna which is an insurance brokerage firm and so I managed to get some experience there, but it, it was quite difficult this la, uh, last summer because of COVID, obviously, but I managed to do some virtually. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and Presley, same question to you. What did you do to really boost your CV? 
Yeah, so pretty much the same thing. Um, around the end of term three, there are loads of different applications for different societies and things that start opening up and like towards the start of summer as well. So around that time, I was just always on LinkedIn and Facebook trying to find something that I think I'd be interested in. And I think what Alex said was really important, like you want to join something that you actually are interested in. Otherwise, you're just going to have a bit of a rubbish year. Um, so yeah, I did that, tried to join as many as possible. And you don't just have to join finance societies. So you could do non-finance things and still gain transferable skills. So you can gain teamwork skills, problem solving skills, like all of that stuff from those. And that applies to investment banking as well. So it doesn't just have to be finance societies, but I would recommend maybe joining one at least because um, I didn't have a spring week. So I needed to show my interest in finance somehow. And so that was by joining a finance society. So yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah, no, I, and I definitely echo that, um, particularly with regards to like doing non-finance stuff as well. Like everyone said, it gives you transferable skills, which is always useful. Um, Rahina, what would you say that students can really do to improve their CVs? Um, and how does SEO help with this? Yeah, I think um, in extension to like everything that's been mentioned, just touching on what Pristy mentioned with regards to transferable skills, um, like all experience is good experience. So keep it on your CV and just think about how am I going to use this experience to kind of showcase I have the skills for the skills that I'm looking to go into. So, for example, if you're looking to go into markets, then you, you know, you showcase that you've got good commercial awareness, that you're good with building relationships with people, etc. Um, and I think the other thing that I would say with regards to your CV is that whenever you've like reviewed your CV and you've done it, give it to someone who hasn't seen it before and ask them two questions. Ask them, when you look at my CV, what area do you think I'm interested in and what skills do you think I have? And the answer they give you, does that match to the answer that you're kind of hoping to display out? Um, and then hopefully that will help you with your CV. With regards to how SEO London supports, we do have CV clinics that will be running from uh, June onwards. Um, so a CV clinic is literally where you can just come along and get the chance um, to get some general feedback on the CVs, as well as if you have any questions, you can ask them there as well. We also have something called our Step Into programs, which I will talk about a little bit later when I um, Give you an overview of SEO London but during those sessions you can also receive um, feedback on your CV and more importantly you get to see the quality of other people's CV. I think a lot of students don't realize how good or bad their CV is until they've seen their competition and that allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. Definitely that's some great advice. Um, so is there anything that you guys did that you think really made your application stand out, uh, particularly with cover letters because I know that's something people struggle with quite often. Um, so Melon, what about you? Um, I think the main thing is to make sure that the cover letter is quite clear, concise and reads well. So you don't kind of want um, spelling errors or punctuation errors that will then mean that you have an automatic rejection. Um, so make sure you kind of proofread it. And I use a structure that I think quite, quite a lot of people use. So have an intro statement and then kind of three paragraphs, um, why the firm, why I be, and then why you. And then from this, um, I think that the firm can then kind of gauge who I am as a person and like my skills and my intentions. So I think um, that's how I approach the cover letter and that happened to be successful. So I'd kind of suggest that. Mm -hmm. Amar, what about you? Um, yeah, so what I'd probably add is do like really give it your best to try and make it personalized. Um, it's so easy to just fall into the trap of making it generic. And um, believe it or not, you'll make mistakes where you might forget one firm's name. You might, you might make a mistake in the firm's name and you know that can cost you a whole application. And also what I'd probably say is, you know, really look into what the firm does. So for example, do you talk about a deal that you think the firm's interested in? If you're applying to a sales and trading role, look at some market activity that they're doing. Um, do they specialize in any particular trading desk? Are there any products that they're really um, selling and marketing? So just really go into the specifics and you will, you believe it or not, that will really help you put yourself at the top of the pile, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Marina, as someone who's probably seen a lot of cover letters and applications, is there anything that you think particularly makes someone's application stand out? Yes, I think um, make sure that your cover letter is not just a replica of your CV. You need to go into a bit more depth and have a bit more substance there. Um, as it's already been mentioned, it needs to be tailored to so avoid anything generic, especially when it comes to like when your cover letter should cover three things. Why 
you're picking that firm, why you're interested in that division, and then why the firm should pick you. Um, so when you're discussing why that firm, avoid anything general like, you know, I'm interested in the fact that you have high caliber colleagues or the fact that you're global like this is just generic you can change the firm's name and that would apply to everything so i would just say yeah tailor your cv sorry tailor your cover letter um because it just shows that you've made that effort mm -hmm, definitely so um going on to talk about like networking emma you've kind of already touched upon that and how you networked um how useful was it in helping you secure your summer do you think yeah um so in first year i went to like a lot of talks and everyone said to network 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 and i was like yeah yeah whatever like everyone just says that but honestly like it helps so much so i kind of had a strategy where um and going back to your cover letter um on each of my cover letters i would like to reference kind of a call i had with someone from the company so usually if you call up someone from the company you just message them on linkedin whatever you can kind of ask them what's well, something specific about the company and you can kind of get those key phrases and put that in your cover letter. So you can be like, having spoken to this person from your company, they told me about this, 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 this interested me because blah, 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 blah. So instantly your cover letter is a lot more personal to you. And it literally is a lot more personal to the company as well. So it shows that, you know, it's specific to that company. So that definitely helps a lot. And that is where networking comes, comes in. The other thing is networking can help with referrals. So if you kind of have a convers good conversation with someone, you feel like the conversation's good, you can kind of, at the end of the conversation, be like, hi, um, blah, 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 good talking to you. Could you, for example, give me a referral? And you kind of, you kind of have to judge if, you, if it's the right vibe. You can't just ask everyone for a referral. You kind of have to judge. If you have a good conversation with them, you know, kind of slide in the question, could you refer me? Or perhaps could you give me the name of someone who could refer me? And then that's kind of how you snowball the process. Um, so definitely networking is very important for cover letter and also for referrals. Mm -hmm. No, that's some great advice. And I think especially like thinking from my experience, a lot of people are quite reluctant to network, particularly in first year, because you think like you're wasting people's time. Um, but you'd be surprised at how receptive people are and how willing they are to help. Um, and, you know, if someone doesn't reply to you, like it's not personal, they're just busy. Um, so, Yash, what about you? Did you network much? Was it very useful? I actually didn't network much. I perhaps should have, um, but wherever I got the opportunity to speak to someone, I took it. Um, and so, for example, uh, with the RBC process, um, the person who interviewed me in my phone interview, I remembered her name. And then when it came to the assessment centre, actually turned out the managing director who's interviewing me in the assessment centre, the person who phone interviewed me on the phone was actually in his team. So we, I was able to kind of make that link with him and instantly he, he brought a smile on his face, et cetera. And you're able to build that connection straight away and it shows that you remember things as well. Um, so that's one thing which I made use of, but perhaps I could have done a bit more uh, networking from first year onwards. Yeah, no, definitely. I'd say the same about myself as well. Um, and Rohina, how do you think students should go about networking now, particularly given that with COVID and everything, um, those like traditional in-person networking events aren't really happening. So how can students go about building those connections? Yeah, I think um, have a look and see what virtual events are out there for you to do that. And then also just be proactive yourself. So for example, LinkedIn is a fantastic resource. Another thing that I would say is when, I, when you talk about networking, don't feel like as if you only have to network with people who are in the industry. You should network with your peers at university as well, especially those in the second and third year, given that they've done a summer internship and they can give you very, like, very good advice about the process and what it entails. Um, at SEO London, we have lots of events especially now that we've moved virtual so we have a lunch and learn series so we have a lunch and learn that basically takes place every wednesday and it gives you um it the topics range uh, from like asset management to different areas of finance, essentially. And that's an opportunity for you to get to meet someone. Um, and then obviously off the back of that, you can connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, and then we also have uh, a range of other events. So at the moment, we have this new initiative called Drop-In Clinics. So what that is, is that we have lots of people in the industry who want to help students. So they are literally booking time out in their calendar. And if it suits you and you're interested in that um, profile, you just book a time out with the employee and you spend like half an hour discussing whatever it is you want to discuss. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Um, so kind of moving on in the process now to interviews. Um, the interviews for like summer internships are quite different, understandably, for uh, from the interviews for spring uh, weeks. 
So Alex, for PWP, how did you, um, how was the process for you? What was it like? Um, and did you have a first round and what was the structure of the assessment center like? Yeah, sure. So for PWP and a lot of the boutiques like Centerview, very similar process because it's run by Dartmouth, you have a telephone, which is for a networking event, which seems a bit much, but how it is. And then after the networking event, you have a face-to-face. -face. And then after the face-to-face, -face, you have the AC. And uh, the face-to-face -face is quite intense for, at least I found, for the boutiques, because I think for PWP, it was one and a half hours and about an hour was spent on uh, sort of motivations and then half an hour or about 20 minutes was on technicals and then you had a 10 minutes um, like mental maths test. And then the AC was quite long. I think it started at nine and finished at six. And you had four 45 minute interviews. You had like a lunch break where you'd go out for lunch uh, with analysts, which was really nice. And then you had a case study, which was about two hours. Um, and then you had some more sort of verbal reasoning and maths tests as well. So it's it super intense. And yeah, I would so say just... Sorry, go, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say, just to stand out um, for the interviews, uh, try and, well, A, know your deals inside out and have an opinion on them because you, you'll get asked those sort of things time and time again. Uh, refine your answers to like why you YOB and why the firm. And just finally, try and find a niche. So for me, I, I knew a little bit about um, takeover code, which is like no one really thinks about law and finance. But if you can actually like, tell uh, the bankers a little bit about takeover code in the UK versus Germany and uh, how that, that affects the rules of the game and how deals are different in UK and Germany. Um, yeah, I think you stand out. And there's loads of other little niches as well that you could uh, stand out with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was going to say seems pretty intense. Um, so Pristi, you interviewed for a bulge bracket. Was that very different? What was the process like? And what was your assessment centre like? Um, so the process was actually a lot shorter. I just had a video interview to start with, but it was on higher view, so there wasn't anyone on the other side. And then um, usually you have a telephone interview and then an assessment centre. And the assessment centre actually sounds quite similar. So it was three back-to-back -back interviews. One was technical and two were competency. So with the technical interview, um, they basically shared their screen and had a bunch of numbers up on the screen and uh, one of the questions was actually to do a comps analysis so I would definitely say know your technicals really well I got asked questions that required a lot of thinking it wasn't just questions that I could memorize and say so you have to really understand your technicals as well as knowing them really well um so for my last competency interview I um basically he only asked me questions for about 10 minutes and the other 20 minutes he opened up the floor for me to ask him questions so what's really important is to go in with loads and loads of different questions that you can ask to actually have an engaging conversation with them so um Alex said to know your deals inside out and I think that's really important because that really helped me there so my interviewer it turned out that he'd worked on a deal that I knew quite a lot about so he was actually one of the bankers on the deal so we were actually able to have a nice long conversation about the ins and outs of that deal I asked him what his opinions were on it I had an opinion on it so I was able to express that to him and I think that really really helped me because I could show commercial awareness technicals and all of that and it showed that I'm not just asking him pointless questions we're able to actually engage with each other so yeah, those are definitely my main tips. Yeah, that's some great advice. Um, so it leads me nicely like onto my next question, question, which is about technicals. So I don't know about you guys, but I found the jump in terms of what you need to know for springs and what you need to know for summers to be very, very steep. Um, so how did you guys prepare for technicals and were there any like resources in particular that you found really useful? Um, Yash, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Uh, in a way, we were quite fortunate last year because our exams were cancelled, so they gave us plenty of time to learn technicals. But there were two books which I used. Uh, firstly, it was Financial Modelling and Valuations by someone called Paul Pignatro. And that was good because it started off with the accounting fundamentals and it also had like a case study throughout the book where they gave you like an Excel template and you could build a three statement model. So that really helped in understanding the concepts behind accounting and valuations. 
And the second book, which I used, which is mainly for valuations, is um, the Rosenbaum book. It's used by, I think, almost everyone. Uh, it's probably it's called the Bible for Investment Banking. But yeah, uh, there's a PDF available online, so you can just download it and read it um, and also understand what you're reading as well. I think that's an important aspect of it. Yeah, definitely. I think someone in the chat just asked if you could repeat the name of the first book. Uh, yeah, sure. I can type it in the chat, I think, if that might be easier. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and so, Milan, you have an offer from an elite boutique, which people tend to say has like more technical interviews. Did you find that was the case and how did you prepare for it? Um, yeah, I think it was a bit more technical. Um, in the video interview, I was asked like quite a few technical questions and similar to Alex, it lasted around an hour and a half, I think. Um, but I prepared for that through um, different resources. Actually, I used Wall Street Oasis and also 400 questions for investment banking interviews. Um, and through that, I was able to like gain a good understanding um, and I just kind of memorized that and tried to understand it. And then I think also like touching on Pristy's point, good commercial awareness really helped because I was able to apply the technical knowledge um, to what I've read. And so that helped me, I think, stand out as well in the kind of technical interviews um, in the AC where they're kind of testing you and um, there, there might not be a right answer, but it's just about how you think. So I think that was, um, that was how I went about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, and I, I think Amar, you're the only one we have on the panel who's doing a markets internship. Um, what kind of technicals do you need to know for markets and how did you go about learning those? So I think this really depends um, per bank. Some banks require more than others. So speaking on Societe Generale, there wasn't actually any, um, I guess, assumed technical knowledge that you were supposed to have. In my, I went into my AC having you know, a whole wealth of things I could have talked about. But the only question, the only relatively technical question I got was, what's an example of a trade that you would make today? So that's pretty creative. Um, luckily, luckily, I thought about it before, but you could even think of that on the spot. You just really want to see how you think. But in terms of markets, instead of memorizing, you know, the different asset classes, how they work, how to price them, you're better off having a good commercial understanding, knowing what's moving the markets. They'll ask you very um, opinionated questions. So they'll ask you what's happening to the price of gold, for example, or what's going on in the forex markets in Asia. So, you know, you need to have a good broad understanding. And then if you really want to impress them, you can go into the specifics. So you might think, so I'm interning equity derivatives. You might talk about um, a particular options trade that's interesting to you. So you're really, you're elevating the conversation. They're coming in there thinking, okay, I don't know how much this guy knows, but then now you're really raising the bar and they're raising their expectations of you. And if you're really able to deliver, it's really going to help you in the end. So that's what happened with me. Definitely. And on that, I'd say just don't mention any technicals that you don't completely understand in your interview, because they obviously know a lot more about it than you do. And if you bring it up, they'll, they'll catch you out on it. Um, so Emma, is there anything in particular that you did in your interview that you think really made you stand out? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I would say first and foremost, um, with technicals, make sure you're solid on them. Because if you mess up technicals, that's it. Like there will be a million other candidates that know their technicals, like 100%. So if you mess up your technicals, you, you've just put yourself in a really bad situation. So make sure you're solid on technicals. Second thing, um, I would say know the company inside out. So for example, with Credit Suisse, I went to an event that they held um, in the summer period. And they talked about like a restructuring they were doing and a new CEO and this and that. So I knew all of those things. And not only that, but I kept up to date commercially. So I knew like a recent deal they did, all of that kind of stuff. So know the company inside out. The other thing is um, I had spoken to quite a lot of people at the company. Um, like I'm going on course with people, ask for advice, et cetera, et cetera. So I knew what they were looking for. And usually in each company, they kind of look for something different in each candidate. So for example, at like Credit Suisse, I heard they like, like really confident people people that really know their technical technicals well. So I focus on that. So kind of cater to what they want. And the final point I would say is um, when they say ask us a question, that arguably is one of the most important questions. Make sure you ask interesting questions. Just be very energetic, be very happy. Like just be smiley, just even if you have to force it, just be happy, be smiley, be energetic. Um, and it'll go a long way. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and Christy, what about you? You mentioned that you talked quite in depth about a deal you knew about. Is there anything else you did that you think made you stand out? 
Um, I think, so with the technical questions, I think some people, well, normally I would have a tendency to just try and like rush into it rather than taking a step back and actually thinking about what they're asking. And for Bank of America, I didn't do that. I paused and I thought about what he was actually asking me. And I think that really helped. Um, the question, it wasn't really one that was on the resource banks. It was, it was more of something that I had to work out. So by doing that, I think I was able to actually get to the answer correctly. And what I did that helped was I said what I was working out. So I basically thought out loud, if that makes sense. So, so that lets them see the way that you think and what goes on inside your brain. And they want to see like how you get from A to B and what goes on in your head. So how you think pretty much. And so I think that really helped rather than just sitting in silence. I let him know what I was thinking. And I think that helped a lot. Yeah, that's some great advice. Um, and Alex, same question to you. Is there anything you did that stood out, you think made you stand out? I think just the way you're trying to put across that you know the technicals is also really important. So everyone can remember like a DCF formula, but actually understanding like what does the WAC represent? Why are we discounting by WAC rather than an interest rate or stuff like that? And then also really understanding but how does it fit into the process? Um, like why were you doing a DCF over other valuation methods? And what's the merits of a comp or an LBO? When would we use an LBO? Um, is is going to go a long way as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and I think interviews are something that really just comes with practice. Um, but Rahina, how would you suggest that students really master their like interview technique? Um, and what can they be doing over this summer to get prepared for summer interviews? Yeah, but I would just say practice makes perfect. Um, so just get that in there. Um, when it comes to like support that SEO London has, we have uh, we do run interview clinics from June onward. So that's just an opportunity for you to come and get some advice and for you to also practice your um, like answering some interview questions um, and gaining some feedback from that as well. And then we also do have uh, coaching calls that we do for certain events. So for example, if you are, have been progressed to like the final interview with one of the firms we usually run a coaching call which you can attend um, just to give you a bit more guidance around what sort of questions that firm tends to ask um, and just advice around that. Mm -hmm. Sounds great um, okay so I've just got like two more questions to wrap up really um, so Emma is there anything that you regret not doing this time in first year? Um. I would say I didn't put enough effort into my applications. Like I remember um, one uh, spring week interview I had with Morgan Stanley and they asked me, um, they asked me what's investment banking. And I was, I was baffled. I was like, so literally during the interview, I was typing up on my phone on the internet, what is investment banking? Um, obviously I didn't get the offer. So yeah, I would say just put effort into your applications and just know your stuff. Like you want to go into investment banking, cool. Do you actually know what it is? You actually need to know because you're going to be working 100 hour weeks. They're not going to take you if you don't know your stuff. Um, so that's the first thing. And like I've kept banging on about just networking, honestly, like just start now, just start messaging people. Um, and that's the best thing to do because you will learn so much from people who've gone through the process. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And not to put anyone off with the 100 hour weeks. Um, but Millen, what about you? Is there anything you regret not doing? Um, Probably using LinkedIn a bit more. Um, I probably could have reached out to people earlier and then I would have been able to build stronger relationships. Um, but I think it definitely is helpful to gain further insight and um, you also get honest answers and you can ask kind of questions that you wouldn't be able to read about. Um, so I think that was good. I did get kind of some negative feedback about banking, kind of some people telling me not to do it, but at least you have that balanced view and then you can make that decision. Um, so I think that's really useful. And um, yeah, I'd say kind of use LinkedIn and kind of um, make sure you want to do investment banking. You know, you do get kind of a high salary, but it's not about the money. You are working a hundred hours a week. It's not for everyone. So you need to be prepared for that and um, make sure that you, you're, you want to do it really. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and final question for all of you, I'll just go around, I guess. Um, so what is your like biggest final piece of advice for people looking to secure summers now uh, without having done a spring? So Amar, we'll start with you. Yeah, so I'd say, first of all, don't stress. 
the point's been reiterated, it's not the end of the world. You know, we have everyone here on the panel who didn't get a spring. We still landed something really good. But what I'd say is try and get your extracurriculars up, try and boost up your CV. You really want things to talk about in these higher views. You know, I can name so many times where a question's popped up. I've had 30 seconds to prepare and I've had no idea what to say. So you really want things to talk about. That's the whole point of doing all these extracurriculars. You're not just slapping on your CV, but even, even in an actual interview with a person, you can really elaborate on things and it will just add character to your whole interview. And the point is you really want to make it memorable. I made, I made my AC memorable by talking about, by firstly researching my interviewers beforehand, knowing which teams they worked in, researching the teams, um, re researching that specific team um, and just giving myself that extra edge. So you really want to personalize the interview. That's what I want to say. But yeah, that's my two cents. Mm -hmm. Yash? Yeah, uh, I think being relentless in your applications, um, you will still get rejections in the summer. Uh, I got lots of rejections in the summer. I think that's, uh, you just have to be relentless and learn from your mistakes and take them in your stride. Um, apply early. I think that's a really uh, big factor and which I learned from Springs. And when I say early, Sometimes it can be on the day of the opening, um, the next day, within a week, within the like, first week, I think you should get your application in um, because they get so many applications. Uh, so you want to be on the top of the pile. Um, but yeah, those are my two pieces of advice. Yeah, that's some great advice. Um, Pristy? Um, yeah, I definitely echo applying early. I think that's literally so, so important. I think over the summer, if you get your CV ready so that by, by the time uni starts, your CV is pretty much good to go and you start getting an idea of what you're gonna write in your cover letters. So the thing with cover letters is that, so the why you paragraph and the why investment banking paragraph, you can pretty much use the same paragraphs for each cover letter. It's just the why banking paragraph that you have to change. So if over the summer you get a good idea of what you're going to write for those paragraphs, it'll put you in a really good position to start applying early um, also, with applying early, I think firstly, you need to get a good idea of which banks you're targeting the most and which banks you're not as interested in. So the ones you, you want the most, I'd say still apply for them early, but apply for them after you've applied for the ones that you don't want as much, because then you'd get practice with video interviews, you'd get practice with telephone interviews, etc. So by the time it comes to the interview with the banks that you really, really want, you'd have had practice and you'd probably perform a lot better. So, yeah. Yeah, that's some great advice. I definitely echo that. Just make a, a list or an Excel spreadsheet and figure out where you want to apply first, get some practice in before you apply to the places you really want. Um, Millen, what about you? Um, basically just touching on what everyone else said, but the three main things I'd say, um, firstly, apply early. So um, make sure you are ready though when you apply. Uh, I feel like I could have applied a bit earlier, but for me at the time, um, the, the kind of quality of the application would have been a lot worse if I had rushed it. So I took the decision to apply a bit later, make sure that I was kind of up to date on technicals, had practice tests, and I think that did help me. Um, and also just use a spreadsheet. So make sure you're organized, um, have all the kind of firms you apply to, what stage you've got to. Um, and that's, that's always good to kind of keep on track of it and also you'll have so many deadlines of when tests need to be completed interviews like when they're coming up so you need to make sure you're you're on top of that the kind of worst thing would be to miss an interview um and then I'd also say practice your tests um and then because I th actually think a lot of people get rejected at that stage so if you can avoid that that would be good and then just don't go so just do come in um don't worry just try and identify where your weakness is and improve on it um it's all about kind of being adaptable and quick like you need if you're getting rejected you need to identify it and then try and improve on it because the actual application window is very small um and it's for a short period of time so it's just about working smart for sure yeah um alex final advice um, I'd just say cooperate with each other because there, well, there's 200 people here. There's plenty of jobs in the city in Mayfair. Um, just ask people different questions uh, from different tests and interviews and stuff like that. And it's the classic thing, practice makes perfect and just do loads of mock interviews. Mm -hmm. Amir? Yeah, what I would say is, um, look, at the end of the day, you don't have a spring. Um, there's no point kidding yourself. There's no point BSing yourself. Um, so what are you going to do about it? And the best thing to do is just go upskill yourself. 
go learn coding, go learn Python, go do virtual internships online. Um, I think it's called Inside Sherpa or Forage, whatever it is. Do virtual internships, do volunteering, get an unpaid uh, internship with a startup. Because at the end of the day, everyone else is going to have a spring. Why, why are they going to choose you? Go upskill yourself is the main thing. Um, next thing is um, make sure there's no typos on CV cover letter. If you get rejected at that stage, you know, because of a typo, that's on you. That's your fault. Um, online test as well. Um, like others have said, job test prep. Make sure you're amazing at all of these tests and don't get rejected at, at that stage because it's just a waste. You're just writing that cover letter and then just going to get rejected at the test. It's just a bit of a waste. So ideally, get in front of an interviewer. And then from then on, you know, luck and other things play a role. But the CV, the cover letter, the online test, you know, kind of ace them for each firm. And then you'll get enough first round interviews to then get enough second round interviews to then get enough ACs. And then obviously the offer at the end. Yeah, that's some great advice. Uh, and finally, Rahina, any big piece of advice? I'd just say um, be organized with kind of everything that everyone's just said um, and stay connected with SEO London. So we have, yeah, we have a lot of support to help you stay organized. So we will always inform you when applications have opened, give you reminders as to when they are closing. We also have um, application guidance, which is tailored to every single firm that we work with and we give support at every single stage. So if you were to inform us that I don't know, you've progressed um, to the online stage for X firm, we will give you support in, you know, what resources you can access around their uh, testing, um, around their testing stage and just advice and guidance around that. If you tell us that you've been progressed to an assessment center, you know, we have personalized um, prep material, which will kind of give you insight into what will that assessment center include, because every single assessment center is different according to the firm that you've applied to. Generally, there's some, there can be a lot of, you know, overlap, but that guidance is useful in just getting you feeling a bit more confident before you actually go to that AC. And then lastly, we also put you in touch with someone who's already been through the process, which is hugely valuable because you can get to speak to an SEO alumni who's already done the summer internship at the firm that you're hoping to do one at, and then you can kind of clear up any questions before you go to your interview. Definitely. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the panel. Thank you so much for providing such great insight, guys. Um, there was some really great stuff said there. So we're going to go into breakout rooms um, so you can ask some of the panelists questions directly. Before we do that, um, I'll hand over to Rahina to just tell you guys a bit more about SEO London. Lovely, yep. So SEO London is a charity, um, and so I won't go into too much detail, but we were founded um, in the year 2000, but our roots are from SEO New York, and essentially what SEO London does is that we provide opportunities for students to gain access and um, entry into various different um, industries. So the I'll specifically talk about our SEO careers programming, which is where we work with all university students, and so this is where we support students in gaining access to um, um, you know, access, to, access to opportunities within um, the investment banking industry, the asset management sector, the alternative investment space, the corporate space, the consulting space, technology, as well as corporate law as well. And um, so if any of those interest you um, and, you know, and you want to kind of have more opportunities to gain exposure there, then, you know, do, um, do register with us. Um, and what I'll quickly do, actually, if I can as well, just share with you a quick... Um, I'll just quickly share my screen of some of the activities that we actually have going on. So uh, are you able to see my screen? Yep. Okay, perfect. So this is actually just some of the activities that we have going on from July onwards. So we have our step into programs. So we have, as mentioned before, step into finance, step into tech, step into consulting, etc., and an insurance one. But this is kind of the support that we give on a weekly basis. So we're always very busy. So for example, on Mondays, we will have mock assessment centers, which is all around getting you prepared for your summer internship um, assessment center. So you, this is the opportunity for you to undertake your own stock pitch, group exercise, you know, uh, gain some advice around commercial awareness, as well as the CV review as well. Then we have all of the exposure to the industry. So for example, from Tuesdays onwards, this is where you get insight into all the different areas of finance, which will hopefully inform your application as to where you need to apply. And not only that, but make the quality of your application stronger, because it just means that you can actually answer properly why is it that you're interested in markets as opposed to investment banking or another area of finance. And then lastly, we have a range of other activities going on from September to November. So we have a range of firms that we work with. Some of the logos are below. below. 
um, but we tend to have specific insight days with these firms, which are exclusive for SEO London. So that gives you the opportunity to kind of meet them firsthand. We also have something called our SEO recommendations, which is where SEO London will flag strong students across to the firms that we work with. And then lastly, um, as mentioned before, we have ongoing application support at every stage. But lastly to that, we, you know, there are opportunities um, at SEO London, which are exclusively SEO London based. So you won't find them if you go into the firm's website or through any other platform. So we have like summer internship program with a firm called Pictay Asset Management and all of their summer intern classes is, is exclusively from SEO London. And that's not, it's not just with Pictay, we have other firms that do similar things with us as well. So as long as you stay connected with us, let us know what you're looking for, let us know what stage you're at, we will always be able to, we will always be there to kind of support. Okay, perfect. Thank you, um, so we'll go into breakout rooms now. Hopefully you should all be um, invited to join one in the next couple of seconds.